I think I think by far the hardest job is being a landlord. And the you most know, oh, this is a good job. take. I yeah. like this. Yeah. yeah. Because these guys are giving people places to live, taking the nation's all the heroes. Houses. The mm-hmm. nation's heroes. 9-11 responders wish that they were landlords Dude, this needs in to the be- most heroic <laughs> city saluting. of New York. <laughs> Salute to the landlords of New York City, <laughs> the finest people in this United States. <laughs> <laughs> you have that aggressive, <laughs> that aggressive emotional. <laughs> I think it's about <laughs> what they do. Like you're crying on the inside. Oh, you're so landlord. goddamn proud. You that know, salute. If you mm-hmm. want to own a home, don't blame a landlord for buying it first. Do what the landlord did to earn hey, that. Hey, bird catches the wind. Shows his peasants. parents properly. Yes. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. Just you're the idiot lit. who chose poor parents. <laughs> don't, don't blame them. Dumbass. Why didn't you strike while the iron was hot in 1988? <laughs> why don't you just get a big building and don't care if there's running water in it and then shove a bunch of people in there on government subsidies and you get your money you know what i do now what i always do come back to is why don't they move to a more rural area Who? and uh, oh, anyone teacher. who's complaining about these things about the the high prices of things they often live in these big cities where things are really expensive and okay, you got to live in a city to do your job. Who the fuck in Atlanta, bro? Do you know how cheap it is in Atlanta compared to the other any other major city you've heard of in America? Boston, fucking New York, oh, really? LA, all those mm-hmm. places. Atlanta's cheap as shit. For like, a major like, city. Yeah. My mm-hmm. rent is, is, is like, I have a big house with, with many rooms and it's <laughs> low rent. It's, it's, my rent is double what I paid when I was 19 in a one bedroom apartment. It, and and this is a house. Uh, it, it's it's so low you don't feel bad about renting here. That Damn. you get so much value for your money, and especially if you're splitting it with somebody. So, but I hear about these people with twenty five hundred a month, five thousand a month, ten thousand a month, and my God, how could you stomach that? How could well unless you're geared in, you're a guy like Tucker, you know, who's who's mm-hmm. who's really profiting from being right there in town mm-hmm. sure. where he can collaborate and do things. What the fuck are you doing? Why aren't you in Atlanta? Why aren't you in a suburb? Why aren't you in the country? Mm-hmm. If you could let go of being a cosmopolitan person in the big city, I bet you'd live a happier life in some smaller oh, yeah. town where gasoline well, gasoline costs the same, but everything else is cheaper. Like, like the rent where yeah. I'm from, if you don't mind living in the country... You know, it's, it's few, it's hundreds of dollars, yeah. not thousands of dollars. It's, if you're like a so Twitch cheap. streamer who just doesn't do anything but stream from like their room, like you can either like you could be the king of Omaha, like you could be the guy in Oklahoma City who owns the biggest house in Oklahoma City. You could have a, you could have a compound. People around you will start to talk like that's land is so that. cheap. Yeah, it, yeah. The, the property values are in L.A. You, properties like. Six or seven thousand dollars for an acre. Um, when when you get out into the country, you know, compare that to to, to just millions of dollars for a quarter of an acre, w- which is what you see in, in in the cities. It's uh, I don't know. I I never hate the landlords, but I do. What I do hate is, I hate the I don't like the blind hate against anyone who rents a property because that's what I feel. Uh, what I see most rents on the out internet. The property. Like Haiti yeah, who rents rent. out a part property? Who, a, a land, anyone in general who accepts rent. Uh, but but I really don't like the gigantic corporations that are coming around and just buying yeah. everything up over market values, driving the those values up, and then just renting everything <clears throat> out. They own entire neighborhoods mm-hmm. out here. Like every every one of my neighbors has the same trash can, huh? How'd that happen? <laughs> like every one of these houses is owned by some big company. We're all just every month. It might be my age, but I no longer have much patience for people who hate the way the world is, as mm. opposed to the ones I admire who try to thrive in the way the world is. So like it, whatever, if you go into nursing and then spend the next your entire career complaining that nurses don't make enough money, dude, it was that way since before I was born and I'm really old. Like yeah, it, yeah. nursing salaries didn't catch you by surprise. Oh, did you become a veterinarian? And now you have a tremendous amount of um, 
uh, student loan debt and your salary is not that of a doctor of someone who's equivalently educated, you should have went into this wide open. Save the tears for your mom who might give a flying fuck because I'm not that guy. I don't care. This is what you signed up for. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, like, oh, d does this guy own like four houses on the side? Yeah. He scrimped and saved during his 20s, bought some houses during his 30s, you know, made some good moves. And now in his 40s, he's got a couple homes to rent out and he's he's got some passive income. Do it. Do it. It sucked for him. I guarantee you he didn't have a nice car when he was saving for those homes. He didn't take the vacations. He didn't you know he missed out mm -hmm. on a lot of cool shit so that he could set himself up for his future. Those options still exist today. And you just discredit mm -hmm. everyone before you who scrimped and saved and like got ahead it's it's definitely different now like home ownership is not as easy as it was 30 years ago like wages have stagnated interest rates are crazy right now just the, the market of homes is insane like and so i do i understand what you're saying but i will push back a bit that like this generation of young people now like the possibility of home ownership that was available to people who were their age now in 1987 like isn't there so it's not i actually there. agree and appreciate that but there have been pockets like this before. Um, I, I remember in the 80s when we bought our beach house or something, the interest rates were like 18, no, 14% on a mortgage or something. It was really high. And I remember my father, I think he got an 11% mortgage and was like, damn, you know, we're doing pretty well. They're still way low. What's a mortgage rate now? 7%, something like that. Yeah, but the total of the house is so much higher. Uh, well, yeah. But I'm what my point was is there's going to be <clears> – <throat> whatever five-year pockets in history where it's not a good time to buy and it's hard to time those and get it right but it will get better you know, i don't have your interest experience. rates will go back down i don't have your experience or maybe even your eye for this sort of thing but it seems to me like it's not going to change anytime soon because of what i mentioned earlier the way that when those companies come around they don't just buy everything they buy the houses you want it you know they they leave you with these scraps where it's like nobody wants to buy those homes you know, like, like, like it's hard to find a home that you, that isn't owned by, I don't know, um, Zillow or of, BlackRock or one of those gigantic just, companies. So much of the economy is red hot right now. And people don't think it is because they don't. Trump would have been way better at like talking about the hot spots in the economy. But yeah. the fact that unemployment is crazy low right now and the housing prices are high and they had to raise interest rates in an effort to cool off the economy because we're kind of too heavily employed and that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that won't last forever. There will be a recession at some point. And Germany's all those houses that bought those, um, I'm sorry, all those companies that bought those houses will lose their fucking shirt if they bought when it was high. Two there was quarters a, of negative growth. That's a, that's a recession, right? That's the did definition. Did you say two? Two I quarters. Think, yeah, I thought somewhere. it was two. I don't know. Somehow yeah. I heard three. Germany's in a recession. Um, Are they? Yeah. I, 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 at least the internet claimed it was today. Uh, okay. I think that a hot spot in our fucking economy has to be the fact that I hate that that it, that they don't sell this Ukraine thing correctly because they say the U.S. gives this and that. U.S. approves three more billion dollars uh, worth of you know aid. What they should say is three more billion dollars worth of loans. Three more billion true. dollars worth of loans, hundred two hundred eighty six million dollars more worth of loans. This is the Lend Lease Act. This is how we kept uh, the Soviets, the British, and everybody else on this side of the Atlantic alive for World War II. The the Russians would have starved to death, and the Brits would have would have, would have too if it weren't for us, <clears throat> Lend leasing them huge stocks yeah. of food, guns, ammo. I saw a video the other day of Russians in a cave cracking open crates from World War II with brand new Thompson machine guns. So I talk to Chocolate Thunder a lot because he's like my only basketball friend. And uh, <laughs> he's too cool for me. And yeah. he uses lots of like young people words. <laughs> <laughs> it, like, like, so we had a bet. We had a five. He's not as cool. He's black. So he's like <laughs> yeah, extra yeah. cool. Chocolate Thunder. <laughs> so like... <laughs> He was like, hey, you know, that $5 bet we made, is it off now that, like, your best player is hurt? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm still in it. Like, yeah. like I'm not trying to back out of this just because my player got hurt. And then he says, say less. Now, intellectually, I know say less means, like, we're in agreement. We've come to terms. This is cool. Yeah. But a 50-year-old me is like, say less. Like, 
That's rude. I guess he doesn't want to hear <laughs> what I have to say. I'll, I'll just be quiet now. And just like, oh. he, he's, oh, you got we're on That's the same funny. page. You, you had me, what, what he's saying is you had me at hello. Like, he, he, yeah, he but there's like a hundred of those that come up where you know, like, right. I'm like oh, I'll hello. read it to my wife. Like, what what could this mean? <laughs> yeah, he told me he was keeping it Milwaukee. Do you know what that means? Um, no, yes. it's no. Is it an Anheuser right. Bush thing? Is he making it gay? Man, there's like five levels to that shit. So here's <laughs> what it is. <clears throat> He's probably at... <laughs> so keeping it Milwaukee. All right, that means so in Milwaukee, that's where the Bucks play, and a buck is a hundred cents. And when you're keeping it one hundred, you're being real. <laughs> so you go like four layer, four inception layers deep of nonsense, <laughs> and, and, you, and, you, and you let them know you're keeping it Milwaukee. And I was like, get the fuck out of here, get the fuck out of here. Just, just, just. I, I, I don't want to be this old and white to the point where I'm just like, come on, God damn it, you speak <laughs> <this> language <laughs> properly. Like, I feel like a Clint Eastwood with my pants up to my navel, <laughs> yelling at a chair because <laughs> I don't have enough riz and I'm not strapped with the beam apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm never going to be voted with this off. No, so I, I, no, we're all too old for that. <laughs> and, and, and I, and I never have, and that never will break it down sexual style. Like, hey, <laughs> no. you, you, you're not going to bust it down sexual style. I'm going no, through our for, chat. There was another time he told me to say less. No it, cap. He hit me up personally and said, "Hey, can you give me a link to that shirt, that like low calorie syrup you guys were talking about on the show?" Walden so I go Farms. Through my, go through my purchase history. I find it. And I was like, Sick this is how I buy it. Uh, there's 12 there. Um, here's a link. You can probably find it in smaller quantities. And he's like, say less. I'm like, I guess I droned on too long. <laughs> <laughs> like, my bad. <laughs> That's hilarious. You're just, you're just having friendly conversations. Well, you like delete you your like last sentence or something? Him. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> just sorry. Just sorry. Uh, I tend to I be a little overbearing. Shot. I, I, guess I stopped know, like, talking for the rest shop, of the day. You know, like, we didn't talk I, again until the bulk. following day. I took it literally. <laughs> Dude, John, black like, people buy stop. in bulk. Is it, is it racist for me to tell them to buy in bulk? Is that some sort of, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to be you friendly. Buy like, well, I never. You know what? I, well, here's, here's the thing I see on Reddit a lot, and I don't get it. So maybe you could explain it to me. Maybe I'm in the dark here, and, and I'm the only one. Why do they hate landlords? They Who, seem to Reddit? like demonize like the the idea of someone making money by owning property and the idea of there even being landlords. And like, oh, you haven't seen this? It's very, I, know, seen, I know what you're talking I've about. I've seen bad landlords get hated on. No, like, no, no. no. A like, lot like, of like, deservingly like, so. The, the concept of there being landlords, people who profit from just owning a bunch of property. Is, That's where is, Reddit goes too real. liberal on me. This is like, the socialist stuff that's going around right now, right? The idea that this is someone making money. What, what, what is it? I, I don't. I don't want to go into the terms. So I don't know the fucking terms. Like I don't, I don't want to guess it wrong, kind of deal. But it's like the like away from like the what is it? The means of the production kind of deal. So this is someone is just taking taking money from someone else for doing nothing. Is the kind of sentiment of that? What so. it's actually is a guy who took on a risk by buying by making a huge investment, oftentimes with their own two hands, fixing up a place and making it nicer than it was before, increasing its value, renting it out. And then these renters are like, fuck you. Why do you get to do this? Dude, you could have. This is available to all of us, especially if you haven't bought a home before. Yeah, I mean, I like, yeah, I see where you're coming from with like the the middle of the road thing like they are going too far with like every landlord is bad or something like I, i'm not that clued into that universe yeah what i like, like I, I can definitely empathize with the the concerns i've seen which is like every adult in my life told me to go to college and that would give me a job that paid me enough that i could get a comfortable house i could start saving i could you know prepare to, to get a mortgage and that's like oh well now i'm in crippling debt this degree every adult in my life told me to get is no longer as valuable as it was when they got it. And mm -hmm. I'm being told, oh, you know, well, sorry, you're up shit creek. You better go work at Domino's with your, you know, $35,000, $40,000 in debt. So I had a different when I finished sort my of, undergrad degree. <laughs> I, all right. So let's, I want to hear your feedback on this. Growing up, my father didn't say, get a degree and you'll have this future. He said, Woody, he doesn't call me Woody, Woody. 
80% of degrees are, degrees are bullshit. You need a job training degree. You can be a doctor. You can be an engineer. You can be a nurse. You can be an accountant. I'm like, I think I want to get a business degree. No. Business is a general bullshit degree that doesn't get you a job. Accounting is a degree. Mechanical engineering is a degree. Computer science. These are job training degrees. What about English? English is for finding a husband. That's what the English degree is for. It is not for getting a job afterwards. This is this is like what I learned. So when I hear other people say, man, I got this degree and now there's no jobs on the other side. I'm like, well, yeah, you got the wrong one. They didn't tell you these were the wrong ones. They told me that these were bullshit degrees and that there aren't like, it's not job training. The job training yeah. degrees are the ones. I remember when game. I was Maybe other people didn't hear this. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I formulated this by watching Seinfeld as a kid, as bizarre <laughs> as that sounds. Because I just remember like the characters in that show and how like they had those nonsensical degrees and like how like whenever George wanted to go get a job, he couldn't because he had like <laughs> he had he had like an English degree or something. Like like I don't remember what George Costanza's degree is in. I, I wish I did off the top of my head. But it's something I didn't like know that. that was a thing in that show. It wasn't but, architecture. But, <laughs> but but like he's always struggling because like what do you do? He's like, well, I, I worked at Vandalay Industries, and it's like, it's like he's gonna yeah, make yeah, it Porter up the whole way through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> philosophy. Latex. Philosophy is a degree that oftentimes lawyers take, and so you got a philosophy in your undergrad, but know that you're taking a giant risk if you don't actually get accepted into law school and then pass law school and become an attorney. Then you don't have. A, then you basically you you ruined it. You chose a degree that doesn't get you a job. That. That's what philosophy is. Oh, did you? Are you, are you philosophy? Fun? Great. I'm sure. No, I have a I have a psychology degree, undergraduate psychology degree, which was almost useless for me when I finished uh, finished my undergrad. There are a lot of um, therapy degrees that are similar, and, and I might be off on this, but I think I'm on target. Like if you finish with an undergrad and you want to be a physical therapist or a occupational therapist or something like that, you can't get a job. That some yeah. jobs require masters, and I think psychology is one. What's there was stuff I could you? do, but almost nothing was particularly well paid, and almost none of it was particularly interesting work either for me. So it was like I had to go back and get my graduate degree before anything would open up. Some mm -hmm. jobs so, need so that. One thing that's always been interesting to me, like like you mentioned, the two kinds of degrees. Um, mm -hmm. Now you can't really pull like a Frank Abagnale Jr. and just go become a doctor or become a lawyer because those <laughs> are like job training degrees, like you said. Mm -hmm. Like even in that movie, Catch Me If You Can, like he he thinks it's cool to be a doctor until like that kid comes in all fucked up and he's like yeah. vomiting in the in the broom closet because he saw a skint knee he's like oh wait a <laughs> wait a minute i can't be a doctor this is dumb and, <laughs> and then he goes and pretends to be a fucking lawyer and uh but 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 like you can't do those things what you could do is like any of those jobs that require like a business degree it seems like why can't you just get a fake diploma like, like, what if you just like printed out a fake business? Like, like, I, I don't know what kind of job. Requires May as well a try. Like, like you're getting crime. one of those. It, it isn't. Is it a crime? To print out a fake business degree? There's no way that's a crime. <laughs> <laughs> There's just no way. There's whole institutes devoted to exactly that. <laughs> All right, but it's signed by the Ronald McDonald House. So it, here's my <laughs> thing. It, it seems like University of Georgia prints out like. I don't know how many of those a year, those, those diplomas. So why can't I, as a private individual, <laughs> print myself one out? I have like, 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 it. What is gives not them the right? To buy or make fake diplomas. It is fraud if you try to pass them off as real. But they won't know. It'll be so good. <laughs> All right. So, so let's talk about <laughs> the fine print. This right. is not real. Because like, the way that you check to see if a diploma is real is like a bouncer checking your ID. But it's got like a business with a Z in it. <laughs> here's the thing. Let's I say remember that you're... business having an S in it. Yeah, that was like, it must have been a different timeline. <laughs> All right. Let, so, so let's let, let's assume you're applying for some sort of manage middle level management position at like some some it doesn't matter what company your, your job mm -hmm. is going to be like managing people in an office scenario perhaps and you need this this degree this that you are going to fake are they really going to like fucking like check it out really or like call anybody or like scan a fucking barcode i think they're just going to be like oh okay you've got a you got your degree from blah 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 and you were here for this number of years okay and Here's like like yes I think if you mm -hmm. go to a big enough company, if you're working for Pepsi or Cisco or oh Facebook, yeah, maybe then they check you. If you're working for someone small, then they don't. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I would imagine. And it'll probably go by like whether or not you're doing your job. Like if you're faking it and you truly have made it and you have See, no that's idea what where, you're doing. That's, that's where the genius comes in of picking a job that you can do, A, but also that like your business degree would cover, your fake business degree. Like, like you so wouldn't become a doctor or a lawyer. You're anti-switching someone's dog out without their knowledge, but you're pro-hiring someone who doesn't actually have the right degree? Yes. You're okay with yes. switching your degree out on someone? <laughs> yes. Just yeah, I'm absolutely. tracking on these. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're keeping up. <laughs> um, but but, no, and, you're, and you're also willing to send me that link still, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm to buy the juice if I'm being <laughs> honest, if I'm being honest, I'll... I'm not going to send you the link, but whenever this is published on Saturday, you can just go into the description and, uh, and you can and, look and, it up yourself. Look, he doesn't have the skill set. He's been lying about this skill set yeah. the entire show. Yeah, actually, tonight. that is true. Kyle's is the, the worst copy paste drive I've ever made. Yeah, I, I don't know. That, right. I've been no. teasing about it for 10 years. Yeah, control first, C, control V. I don't get it. It's uh, I can't wrap around my head. He pushed back. Like, no, Woody, I'm good at it. I feel like now he's come to accept that he's actually slow at copying. He was still right click oh, no, no, a year and a half ago. I, yeah. I got I got fed up with it. I got fed up with it. I got some pedals under my desk. One of them is control C. One of them is control V. I'm the fucking Good. control pa copy paste master. Yeah. Like it's it's one of the pedals is really? step on it and injects me with something and then I'm happy again. I, yeah. So Kyle, you Twitch. are you walk in. You, you've you're past the hiring process at this company. You're a businessman now. At least Vandalay as far Industries. as they know, Vandalay Industries. You go into there. Let's say it's fucking. I don't know, pick a company you'd like to work at. And then what's the idea that you would come to the floor with where they'd go, man, this guy, he's not lying at all. Definitely. <laughs> like he knows, he knows. Like, if you're working That's at how they think about it, Chipotle, you go into the Chipotle board meeting, you need to have an idea. Day one, they're calling on you. We need to, we need to revolutionize our business. What if Mr. Our Myers. didn't make someone need to. Guys, oh, shit. Yeah. If we put I would, I would, I would ask, here's what I would do. I would ask for some, they want to revolutionize Chipotle. We need to take Chipotle and totally flip it on its head. Okay. You know so how what I would do is I would ask for at there least, a, I, I would need a day to come up with my proposal at least, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. They, they, yeah. they, they can't expect me to just have this like ad-libbed. Then I call my friend that works at corporate for Chick-fil-A and I get her to do my work for me. Oh. And I turn so that like in. A double these, cheat. Yes, double cheat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, at Chick Fil A, behind <laughs> the glass, they have all those little buckets full of, you know, pickles or whatever. Didn't just oh, stop it! <laughs> uh, oh, I, I said Chick Fil A, but I meant Chipotle. Um, anyway, you know, you can say I want this, I want this, and they build your thing along the way. Is that not how Chipotle works? Am I mixing up my no, restaurant? No, 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 no. I just didn't know what the fuck you were talking about. Chick Fil A. Have one of them be Jizz Enhancer. We can just leverage lock and load the ideas we've come up with already okay. and reuse them. They'll right. sprinkle you're, it on you. Now you this burrito, you shoot up. out both ends. Now, this uh, is a winning idea. Is... Just be like, hey, jizz enhancer. And, and then they sprinkle it on, and you suddenly your, your sandwich is better than it would have been. We need to this get our jizz. Idea. We need to get our jizz enhancer in storefront. Mm -hmm. you, were, you were talking about that cop tip. For when, you know, like a natural part of everything, you send people death threats online and then you need to cover your ass. Of course. I'm also interested because you've given some some mind blowing, I'll say, financial advice over the years in regard to maxing out as many credit cards as those foolish companies will give you in order to buy crypto and then <laughs> never, ever pay your credit cards back. Can you explain that theory and how it's working for you? Well, <laughs> it's working beautifully. And I'm continu I'm continuing to cred max right now. Listen, I would be <laughs> if I <laughs> you're, you're cred maxing still? If I if I hadn't cred maxed back in the day and gotten my bag of, of magic coins, I would be dead right now because I would have killed myself. Okay? So yeah. that's how that's that's my financial uh, <laughs> my financial independence. The ticket to my the ticket to my financial independence was a magical little card that said Barclays on it, and another magical <laughs> little card that said Capital One on it, and another magical little card that said Mastercard on it. Like that's that's how I fucking. Uh, but look, the um, if you if you know of an uh, of an asset or a play or something that's going to go up in value, mad, why not? take out a bunch of credit card debt to finance it. Um, that's only mm. if you know of something that's going to go up that's going to beat, uh, you know, 20, your 25% APR or whatever. So it's, it's mm. case specific. Oh, you're going to pay them back? 
case specific. I have been because I want to buy a house, but uh, there's really, if you're not going to buy a house, there's not really any reason to pay back debt. You can just That was it. always the thing because I was yeah. like, yeah, it makes sense that he cred maxed and bought <laughs> a bunch of Bitcoin cheap. And then, but your like, advice was always like, and your credit score? Fuck your credit score. And I'm like, <laughs> well, what if you ever want a home or, well, most, or anything like that? You pay it cash for the home. Unless you're making 10 your grand a day on, on fucking Cameo, you're not going to have the capital. Most Man. people have no hope of ever buying a home. And for, for, most, people, it'd, for most people, it would probably be a retarded decision anyway, because you, you buy a home and you're, the value, your wealth that you're trying to preserve in this investment vehicle is getting sucked away by property tax and uh, you know, maintenance costs, whatever else. I don't, I don't know if, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure buying a home is a good idea from an investment standpoint. I just want to do it because I need a place to put my vehicles. Um, it's typically estate, one of the greatest wealth builders in any family. The real estate market's just about to a fucking implode. Just, just, I, just, it's just about I don't know, to fucking I, implode. I don't disagree like, with you. I'm just saying I don't know anything about it. Like the not, last time the real estate market imploded, prices barely went down. They just sold more slowly, and then they went back up, and then they went higher. Like is that okay. true? But with yeah, even, like, like the cost even, of a house went to like 400 grand. Now it's there's some markets like Florida swampland in Las Vegas where perhaps it did go down. But the bulk of the country, your four hundred thousand dollar house dropped to like three hundred and ninety, sold more slowly, and now it's at six hundred. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know with inflation and 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 then the rake hikes and everything. It it is really difficult for someone <clears> to, to to get into a house for the first time. The the, the system does seem to be uh, set up to keep them out. Good and, gosh, you're right. <sighs> I mean, you want to keep them out if you're a landlord, and I, I see that like movement on Reddit. I was really confused by it at first, like the hate for landlords. Okay. Because like I've never had any like love for any of my landlords. I was never like, oh yeah. Realty investment company, six million. I love them. It's not that. It's just like, but I mean, they own this fucking place, and for a reasonable amount of money, they let me fucking stay here. And like, my rent was late that time, and they they just like nudged me. They weren't shitty about it, so like, <clears throat> got no problem with them. I didn't understand the hate for. I don't them, hate I, everyone else. I buy goods and services from. Yeah, no, I feel, I feel like we've come to an agreement about what this is worth, and and, and we got a good thing going. So like, I, and I still don't understand the hate for landlords as much as I understand. It's it should be a hate for the system. That like you can't fault the landlords any more than you can say fault a billionaire billionaire for not just paying more tax. Like you know he's what's just following the tax me? code. Here's my new billionaire billionaire frustration. Mm. <laughs> Whenever I hear a billionaire talk about how frugal he is, I think suck <laughs> my Buffett dick, alone. you absolute asshole. Yeah, I, Warren Buffett today on Reddit was like, I spent three dollars and twenty five cents for breakfast on a he day. He gave all of his money away today. You know that, right? To charity. Did he really? Like. The vast majority, like 95% of I saw or something. it in a tweet, but my question is, but did he really? I don't know. He's always, I'll tell you what, since Bill Gates gave all his money away to that charity, his net worth is like quintupled, right? Like it hasn't gone down one bit. It hasn't gone down once yeah. any particular year. Bill Gates just gets wealthier year after year after year, and he's still like the greatest philanthropist ever. I'm half wondering if these charities that they set up are some sort of tax avoidance scam thing. They obviously are. <laughs> I, I just can't prove it, but I have my suspicion, and it's PKA, and I don't need any like proof Like the Bird whatsoever. Foundation. But I, I've heard... Uh, um, Elon Musk lives in some inexpensive home. What and, a dick. Uh, I doubt yeah. that. I want Elon Musk. Elon Musk should build $20 mansions and then shoot missiles at them and build more. Just fucking pump some money into the economy. I don't care. I think that's I, what billionaires he... who don't live big, lavish lives, yes. like, we know what you're doing. We know you're faking. We know you're trying to be endearing to us commoners, us peons. Like, fuck off. We know. We know you're drinking, you know, champagne and having caviar behind the scenes just because you had, just because you pretended to eat a bite of the commoner's Big Mac once. I just right, don't know, you know why anybody cares. I want like, you to like, be. I want him to buy Kyle's used socks for seventy-five thousand dollars for the left and seventy-five thousand dollars for the right. Just piss money away, <clears throat> and then Kyle will take his one fifty and do something awesome with it. I, I don't. I, I don't care. I'd waste it. I'd, That's I'd fine. Buy, then the I'd, guy who you wasted on <laughs> will do cool shit with it. I'd buy, I, I'm, I'd buy a full Soren X fucking Olympic style <laughs> gymnasium that I that I'd put in my. I'd knock I walls out idea. to get it all. That's in. a yeah. good ass idea. I, I'd have that idea. giant power rack with the fucking stacks on either side, the three hundred pound stacks. Mm -hmm. oh, we get so fucking. Yeah, strong. if I were a billionaire, yeah, I'd belt get squat what, and never use it. I'd have whatever the nicest functional trainer available was, and I'd have it in every room in the house. I'd buy so many vapes. These are twenty five a pop. <laughs> <laughs> so when I move from there, I get to make the choice of 
either sell this place depending on how well I'm doing in like five, six months or mm -hmm. rent it if I'm doing good enough to just maintain having two houses so I can be like scumbag landlord. It'd be great. Land You'll be a great landlord. <laughs> Landlords are not inherently bad. I will be. Can I? Can uh, I? Well, okay. can I <laughs> I've thought a lot about this landlord thing. Be. Okay. And when's the last time you had a landlord, Woody? 1998 or something like that. So that's going to shift your thoughts on this, I think. Um, I've learn. had issues with mine. Um, I'm it's it's this big corporation, and that's worse than a person. I'd sue a person. I'd I like sue the a man. inverse, but I'm listening. If there was some guy across town who was doing this shit to me and ignoring my requests, I'd sue him. We'd be in small claims court, <clears throat> then we'd be in civil court. Like like I'd I'd fuck him up. I'd make his life annoying. But it's this big corporation. So when you're like, hey, uh, the water leak in my yard. I still have water, but just so you know, I won't be paying for any of the water that leaks out of this house. And the yard is going to be ruined. They allow that to happen for almost eight months. There was a crater in my yard, a koi pond, essentially, that looked like a bomb had fallen there and filled up with water for eight months. It didn't smell, thank God, but it, it was uh, just an eyesore. They didn't mm -hmm. care because that much water leaking wasn't a big deal to them because they're a giant corporation. And the the process of you know getting your claims uh, escalated, there's no one who actually cares. It's all hourly paid employees. It's a nightmare. And then when my when my fucking AC went out a few years ago, <clears throat> again, huge nightmare. I was like, it's 80 degrees in the house. And they're like, 88 is an emergency. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you Damn. know what? Take it I back. Hung, I, I hung up on that guy and called back and told him it was 88. <laughs> so and if he, they'd asked for a picture, I had the blow dryer ready. Like, like, I have two experiences. One, I rented this in an apartment complex. It was a big company like yours. I don't even know how many apartment con super big. And behind the washing machine, you know, for clothes, it started to leak, like the hose went bad or something. And my apartment didn't have a ton of damage, but the apartment under mine, tremendous, right? <laughs> the the light fixtures were like buckets just holding water. The floors were ruined. The carpets needed to be replaced. Their personal belongings were damaged. It was just a stream of water that uh. had caused all this trouble while neither of us were home. So yeah. I returned to... <sighs> a slightly wet laundry area and he returned to a like a ruined apartment cool the people that needed to fix it weren't mad at me they're hourly employees they just do this every day there was nothing personal about it there were no problems from my perspective they replaced the hose they toweled up the thing and that was it like it ended i didn't have any problems they didn't try to get my security deposit back or any of that nonsense they're a giant company who didn't care on the other hand i rented a house from a dude that dude lost his job the house had a hole in the roof, a hole in the roof such that you could stick your arm to your shoulder outside that hole in the roof. You could oh. see outside through the hole in the roof and could the water would come through this hole. It would drip down the walls and it would uh, soak Jackie and I's pillows like wow. they were sponges. And we wake up in the morning with these pillows that weighed like 27 pounds. That's and, <laughs> and it was awful. And there was something wrong with the water and it was well water and there was a pump and the pump pumped so slowly like to fill the washer tub for clothing seven hours like it was outrageously slow when i showered i'd make a cup with my hand and oh fill God. it from the shower head then splash it on my hair it's the well like, <laughs> <laughs> so bad well <laughs> this guy is giving me all of his sob story i'm like hey i got these problems uh... that need to be fixed and he's like i got problems too i lost my job he could have knocked me over with a feather when when i learned i lost my job so we wouldn't be doing any repairs to the rental place but I need you to float my family and continue to pay your rent on time. Why did, his insurance should be handling this. Yeah. I, we're making some assumptions about the fact, the, the idea that him being insured, he just didn't have money to cover any of the repairs because he was just a dude who didn't have the cash to actually be a landlord. And I got, mm -hmm. it was a terrible experience for us because of it. I, I can't imagine. That sounds super yeah. shitty. Uh, it, the, the real problem is you, you need somebody you can go get and make do what's right. And, and it's hard to get that done in either scenario, I suppose, uh, at times. But I, I still think the real thing, but, but when I see people on Reddit ha hating landlords, it's almost like they're like they don't like the system. They don't like the way the scales have ended up for whatever reason. They're like, can you believe it? They just sit there and take my money. I th well, I'm the one working. I support a landlord. That's what I'm doing. And it's like, no, 
I mean, I, you know, it, it's real frustrating to see. If Taylor gets a wild mm -hmm. hair and says, you know what? I need a third job. I'm, I'm, I'm really not busy enough. Neither. And and he decides to save up his cash for this big down payment and find the right place and then, you know, fix it up for the before the tenants mm -hmm. come in and I probably do some level of repairs between every tenant. Then he's done all the stuff that the renters didn't have to do. They were able to just mm -hmm. waltz into the house that Taylor saved up for, that Taylor makes payments for, to do it. Like these landlords aren't evil. That's just the way it works. If you don't want to be a renter, do what Taylor did. Yeah. I mean, like, you're right that it's just like when I see the the like anti-work style people doing it, it's like, oh, this is a child who doesn't know how the world works. Like they heard someone else say landlords are bad and now they're parroting that. Like there's a chasm of difference between like the list of like the 20 worst landlords in New York City where like they're like, I haven't had water in months. And then like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> like, I'll send you to jail. Like there's a difference between that and like a property man like i have a buddy who's a, like a property manager he's one of those guys who was like i'm gonna buy real estate in like addition to my job and within one year he was like oh yeah i had to quit my job like and learn how to be a handyman because i spend all day doing handyman stuff at all these mm -hmm. properties like i thought it was going to be a little passive income but it turns out it's not if you're a billionaire it's passive income because you have a thousand layers of middle management between you and the labor if you're a dude who's a property manager who has a couple properties you're working on that shit all the time you don't have the capital to be like oh there was another boiler issue cost is no issue send another send someone else out there and uh, spend a million like no you're going to be in there trying to figure it out like doing if you what have you can. a dozen if you have a dozen um three bedroom homes that's a lot of toilets. That's a lot of light bulbs. That's so many furnaces and air conditioners and doorknobs and locks and latches and ovens and microwaves. Um, I know a slightly what that's like. You know, dad's farm, those poultry houses. There's thousands of light bulbs. There's thousands of gears and knobs because each chicken gets one, right? So there's thousands mm -hmm. of everything in duplicate. And the biggest part of his job has always been maintenance man. Just walking around. Oh, look at that. If I don't tighten that, everything will burn down. <laughs> Good thing I was here. Every day is that. Every day is catching mm -hmm. something that was three days away from disaster. Have you heard <clears> of <throat> like, like Love for Landlords subreddit? No, I've never that heard exists. of it. Is it a Love joke? This. I'm actually yes. the, the head mod. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a whole subreddit. They've got their own little terminology in there. Like the people, landlords are known as land chads. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they make memes about like fucking me when I increase the rent on a mother, on a mother, single mother of four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know this was my position. When you're a renter, <laughs> who replaces the light bulbs? I replace my own. Hmm. I. You could Taylor? like I, you could like demand that they come fix your light bulbs, I guess. But like, I've always just changed my own. Okay, I wasn't. I I hope this doesn't get anyone fussed at. But when Chiz stayed in our guest house, by the way, he didn't pay rent or anything. He just worked wow. with me and stuff. But but um, when he moved out, to my surprise, all the light bulbs were burnt out. This was a time in our like evolution where, like, most people had contact compact fluorescent bulbs but when they burnt out you replace them with leds mm -hmm. like that's the stage we were in and uh all these compact fluorescent bulbs had burnt out and he was like well, i was just sort of staying here i'm not going to replace your light bulbs and i was like huh i had never heard of that but okay like i'm <laughs> <laughs> so we well, had like eight bulbs to replace I'm he, on, he, he, just, he just slowly acclimated to a darker, yeah, darker yeah, yeah. place and i noticed he was always in the dark over there but i didn't <laughs> like uh you know i didn't ever know he's got okay. candles like, he's walking around like ripped yeah. winkle with one Jizz. of those finger holder <laughs> he would visit <laughs> us he would come over and he'd play <laughs> with, with like laser. jackie and colin and stuff board games <laughs> but uh but i didn't like knock on his door and intrude in his privacy Porch. Like, like, and a big old medieval store I think he just <laughs> stole your fucking light bulbs, man. He could have just no, no, he was he was saving them up. <laughs> and I'm not replacing your copper piping either. Don't even start. Like, <laughs> the wiring in the walls was gone when I got that. I want his side, side on okay. this because because what you've done here is you've uh, you've changed the topic. We were talking about landlords and tenants. If Chitis had been paying you a, a rate. Then uh, then yeah, man, you're responsible for everything in there. You don't break anything either because like you're you're. But he was a guest. Okay, okay. He was a guest. If Taylor comes and stays with me, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. you know, maybe if Taylor and I said, "Hey, you know what? Let's do the Macho Men 
uh, YouTube channel. You come stay with me for th for a month and we'll film working out mm -hmm. here. I'll come stay with you for a month. We'll film there. And uh, we made the Macho Men uh, YouTube channel where we just do voices and we're not all that big. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good ass channel. And, Take this and, part out, Zach. And then, and then, you know, he's, but he's in my guest room and uh, and he's in my gym and he's burning light bulbs. And, and I got that. I don't think that he should yeah. be going and like getting new light bulbs. So that, in my opinion, is what you and Chiz had going on. Right. Because oh, I, I believe it. Chiz was there to, to film a little project. It's all about perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I didn't look at it through that lens. I, I definitely mm -hmm. see your point. Yeah, and there was never any ill will. I just struck me. Of course as, not. Either way, I'm sure yeah, he yeah. was like, you know what, I, I acclimated to the darkness. <laughs> in uh, in like in the spirit of shitting on landlords, like I have had bad experiences with big companies. Like the place I worked or not worked, I lived before this, like five years ago in that apartment. I must have called a dozen times over the course of almost two years like hey i've got like an alarming amount of black mold in my back entryway and like it by the like Jesus. i stopped using my back entryway entirely like you could come from the parking lot behind my place that was fenced in like up to my apartment or you could walk around through death alley and and come in through the front and so i always like would walk through the you know homeless alley just to get around so i would take my chances with the homeless instead of the black mold they just didn't care they just like couldn't care less. It's like, hey, like it's it's like I've you know, I've done some Googling and they and the Internet tells me like this is alarming. Like it shouldn't be a torso amount of mold in the top of like your a torso amount, uh, like like from my neck down to my like waist and is wide, just a patch of black mold and like slowly mm. spreading, spreading, spreading. Like I thought I think I could smell it. Uh, I did I see know. I was over on uh we were talking about the money thing and I was on your Twitter earlier, Destiny, looking seeing what you were up to. Oh, I saw boy. you treated something about like uh, you said like millennials need to learn Fucking how to millennials, play. yeah, make it two hundred fifty K a year plus, like fifty percent of them say they're living paycheck to paycheck. I'm like, you guys fucking serious? This does see it, it literally says that fifty five point four percent of millennials making a quarter million dollars a year or more report living paycheck to paycheck. I I'm bad. I can't imagine that being true. How? What are you buying? Like, I, I don't um, get that. It, uh, they're, they're buying two cars and they're, and each one is $1,200 a month. And then, <laughs> well, I don't and feel then, bad for people who are paying a, a year living paycheck to paycheck. And then they're paying $3,500 a month of rent. And all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute. $6,500 of my money just disappears every month. That still it, doesn't get you very far into into wasting a quarter mil, though, does it? That's yeah, I was a lot of people. Holy holy shit, you can. All right, let's let's start first there. of all. It, remember that a quarter mil is like one hundred and fifty grand take home, something one, like that. Only so, if you pay taxes. Yeah. Well, so now that, we're down to hold on. That's a lot of taxes. A hundred thousand disappearing at a two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Is that including yeah. like healthcare and everything as well in your paycheck? Or Dude, I'm not wrong. A hundred grand out of two hundred fifty grand. That sounds about right to me. Jeez. And. Okay. It's um, almost like forty percent, maybe in California, or uh, is it forty percent? I well, anyway, sorry, like that. Yeah, it's, it's a lot though. Let's use let's use one fifty as the operating amount though. Yeah, I, like, I don't think it's sure. too far off. Like don't forget, yeah, we have one hundred fifty thousand Social Security that. taxes that take a yeah. that, that go for a bunch of that. Zach says one hundred and sixty eight k is a better number. I'm, Jeez, I'm sure one fifty right. is an easier number to use. So <laughs> okay, yeah, think yeah. About, think about that. So total three grand a week. You know, you can spend that. And and so I used to do people's taxes, and. Um, the amount of money that they saved and the amount of money that they earned weren't as tightly related as you'd think. Like I remember Bill Clinton raised income taxes on the top percentage of people. And like we had a heart surgeon who was thinking about selling his second beach house. It's like, did, you have two summer homes? What'd you say? I said that's heartbreaking. Yeah, it is heartbreaking. <laughs> poor soul. <laughs> poor soul. And we had a school teacher who made 30 grand a year. They make 36 now. I've gone way up since then. And uh, uh, she was worth $3 million. She lived a very poor lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But like so, someone do who's good at math, do this. 52 weeks a year, yeah. 150 grand, about three grand a week, okay. right? Yeah. How the fuck do you spend three grand a week? Because not all of that is just going out to eat and immediately like uh, perishable food items. Like if, if they go bananas and get a Tesla, that's like that's a one year expenditure. Like on uh, for like the yeah, I mean, even a Tesla would be pretty what the aren't the, aren't the Model S is like 80K or something or 100K. Mm -hmm. How much are they? 
I have no idea. I just I I I I refuse worse, to believe that someone can make one fifty a year and be living paycheck to paycheck. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. As a really wealthy person, the people that I hate the most in society are middle class people. And when I was Go a working on. class person, <laughs> the people that I hate the most in society were middle class people. Because middle class people, they well, they they want to have the status of being upper class, but they constantly mm -hmm. act like they're fucking working class. So like I'll hear people say shit like this, like, oh, like I'm living paycheck to paycheck, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, what does paycheck to paycheck mean to you? It means that when I get home with my family after a two-week vacation at Disney World, I'm having trouble making like the third car payment for my second child. It's like, are you fucking serious? Like, what do you mean? You're fucking living paycheck? <laughs> like, you, even if we did that post-tax, you're saying $3,000 a week. Holy shit. Like, I remember like $2,500 a month doing like carpet cleaning. It's like, how the fuck do you guys blow mm -hmm. so much goddamn money on like crazy shit? I don't want to pull the avocado toast memes, but like budget your shit. That's insane. Mm. There's so much money that's being like wasted on stuff. Or I shouldn't say wasted, but like at the very least, like acknowledge that you have a spending problem. If you're making that much money and you're actually struggling, short like any like major health issues or, you know, some other like huge circumstance. Um, yeah, I will I, say that I, if you've got sense. any sort of like, one of those really shitty healthcare situations, like a kid who needs wh whatever kind of medicine and it gets ridiculously expensive, mm -hmm. like that can just suck all yeah. the wind out of a-, a yeah. healthcare is a health. whole different animal. Yeah. Yeah. Of course like, you it's, it's, a, a millionaire, <laughs> like a, 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 someone who's worth $3 million can go bankrupt in a couple of years because someone they love got cancer. Like, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Like that's probably. totally different. That's I remember when I, um, my kid's mom had stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and we were still like, we hadn't like officially separated because all the paperwork or whatever bullshit. Um, but because we hadn't officially separated, I was still filing taxes, head of household and everything. And for purposes of Medicaid and everything, we were still considered like joint income. She didn't qualify for any of that shit. I didn't have health insurance. I was a fucking streamer. And I remember I had to buy one of her medications one time. I went to a pharmacy and for two pills to take home, it was a thousand dollars. Like the next day we filed the paperwork for everything. They're like, I can't pay for this. We're going to go fucking bankrupt. Like I was only making like, I think I made like 115,000 that year, which was way better than I made before, but not enough to pay for like fucking that that yeah. for five hundred dollar pills shit. yeah no fucking way yeah that <laughs> shit was insane fuck I, yeah i have a lot of sympathy for um for <laughs> Did, that stuff. For, how for tempted are you at that point to be like can i look at those before i pay them i want to make sure those are the two pills that i needed today and then <laughs> just hard run it? just how run hard is it to rob even better, yeah. even better bring her with you and be like take it <laughs> <laughs> Or you do, or you do the the, the the poor person shampoo thing. You take them home and you crush. And was like, okay, we're gonna mix these with water. Okay, this is gonna be four oh. treatments instead of two. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna okay, dilute it a little pill, bit. All right, lick the pill and then you put it back in the bottle. Jesus. <laughs> Just get better a little at a time with your yeah. pill licks. No, that shit's uh, absurd. Like you can't hold people, you can't hold people to task for losing their money because of medical stuff. Because we have a, have yeah, a fucked up sucks. system and there's nothing to be done on their behalf about it. But like, if it, let's picture a thirty, someone like me, thirty one years old making 150 after taxes let's say i'm even in new york what am i doing to spend that much money oh that's well, fucking absurd well you i will say if you're not careful and I, because my thought process was when I jumped from um, into from nothing to streaming, the first year of streaming, because it was just crazy. I think I made about one hundred thousand dollars. And my thought was like I was getting about like seven or eight thousand dollars a month in terms of like raw income because I was a 1099 mm -hmm. employee. I wasn't paying mm -hmm. tax or whatever. And I had the same process I was like I'm getting eight thousand dollars a month. It is impossible for me to spend this much money. I went from making twenty five hundred <laughs> to eight thousand. Yeah, that shit was fucking one hundred percent gone. I didn't save anything <laughs> for tax or anything. I don't know how, but if you're not careful money can slide through your fingers like nothing e e like until you're making at least like five or six hundred thousand a year like 100 200 300 thousand a year that you can lose that um if you order out every single day that's easily like one to three thousand dollars a month that's gone depending on that how much shit shit you spend. yeah people that on that uber eats and that doordash grind will lose a fuck ton of money i've um, always considered people who have like one or two million dollars to be in the danger zone right <laughs> being stupid as fuck yeah you're a millionaire or multi-millionaire but dude, you can lose it. You know, you just fucking buy all the stuff you want because now you're a millionaire and that shit will go away. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have 5 million, then all of a sudden your returns are getting you like 400 grand a year. You can be a little stupid, but if you have 1 million, you can lose it. You can mm -hmm. easily spend more than your, you know, stock market gains and, and ruin your principal. Especially when people are taking on more monthly payments too, instead of just making dumb purchases, they make dumb purchases. They have to start paying every month, and they're mm -hmm. yeah, you can yeah, you can slide into oblivion very quickly doing dumb shit like that. I, I, it is so. Is it distracting to anyone else how much Destiny's background looks like the Italian flag? Yeah, Shut very the fuck much. Up. Yeah, my stream says it all the time. What do you want to do? Um, sure. Uh, one last thing. Didn't you do sure. a video one time about like investing? Yes. Yeah. Was it just like one video? 
Um, it was one good one and then a second one. Is that how I would describe it? <laughs> Dude, it's not that this- I'm telling you have no idea. Younger than me, I watched that and you talked about like I think you talked about like, compound interest. Get rich and, like, slowly, yeah. And yeah, and yeah. how like you know, with a little bit of money uh, at the start, you can you know make a few million dollars over a long period. But that blew my mind, and that mm-hmm. like really did change because I was very young when I watched that, and like I think that had a big impact on my life. Every time I heard anything about investing, I always thought like. Woody told me, like, if you just start with a little and give it time, you can make millions of dollars. A couple years have passed, and every so often people, like, hit me up on Reddit or something and tell me that they follow that advice, and it's, like, you know, where they are now and they're, you know, how they're on the path. And I um, there's a few videos I've made that I'm really proud of and that they had a positive impact, and that's one of them. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, yeah, I feel really good about that one. People want more, and it's like, oh, I almost just want to make the first one again so people see it. Um, 100%, yep. But it, I have a... I have this idea about sudden wealth and I'll lay it out for you. Uh, So if you're in a position where wealth gets dropped on you, or maybe you have a short career that's incredibly like the the revenue is fantastic. I think about like, what do you do, right? If you make a million dollars a year, should you live like a millionaire? And this is, I think this applies to you, but I'm also thinking like UFC fighters or basketball players or, or, or Mm -hmm. whatever. And the guideline I like to give is like, you should live like you are annually making 10% of your net worth, right? So if you're worth $2 million, you can have a lifestyle of someone who makes 200 grand. And then as that ratchets up, right? You know, if you make, you do that next year, maybe you do it again. Now you have $4 million. You can live like someone who makes 400 grand a year. And if you do that, then you will both live nicely and have a beautiful nest egg at the end of it, at which point, you know, you come out of this and say, all right, you know, now I can start figuring out my investing strategy and my, my long-term lifestyle strategy, right? It, it wouldn't shock me if you followed that. And then at 28 years old, I'm making this up and don't take it as insulting. Your career's over, right? You've had seven more years on YouTube, just exploding and things go fantastic for you. Uh-huh. It would be wonderful if at, what does that make you? 28 years old? If you mm-hmm. find yourself worth, I don't know, $25 million, $35 million or more, and having lived a nice life on the way there, right? Because right now, you, like, you're in your revenue accumulation thing, right? You, you're making profits. It's, it's almost a distraction to try to figure out, you know, a long-term investing strategy. But if you just... It is. <laughs> yeah, right? right now, my long-term investing strategy is my YouTube channel. But, <laughs> if, like... YouTube's going to have like uh, easily a decade run as the biggest video sharing platform. Like there isn't a competitor and it's like, Mm -hmm. honestly, like what, what better? Cause like, yeah, I own prop or I did and Mm -hmm. I've tried your real estate and all that stuff, but like there is no better investment than my YouTube channel. There just isn't period, you know, like just throwing money. That's where your time should be focused, you know? And on the other hand, I do love what Quib is doing and is diversifying and his video games and his real estate. And that's all great. But like, for you, like, I would just love to see you sort of, you know, to turn what you're doing into a profit center of some sort, at least keep some of it for you and live on 10% of your net worth, right? I don't know. I, I couldn't even guess what your net worth is. Yeah, but is. live on is different because I don't spend shit. Like, I, I drive a shit car and uh-huh. I have a very average house. Like, it's it's literally 100% my videos. Like, I bought a BMW i and I tried that lifestyle, but I don't care for it. Like, Literally, all I want in life is to be successful. And that's where all my money goes. Because there are a lot of people who would make a million dollars and not realize that that's not a forever thing, right? But I think if you're in like YouTube entertainment or if you're an athlete or et cetera, then you have to realize like how I think an average pro NFL player works three years, right? He's got a three. Yeah. Yeah. Really? (laughs) Wow. Booted fast. (laughs) And uh, Taylor, do you have any guess what an average NHL player would play? Oh, NHL, probably like three, four. Yeah, I mean, pretty much every pro sport, you don't hear about the guys who only stick around for a few years, but that's most of them. Right, right. So those guys making 800 grand for three years should be living on 10% of their net worth. And then when that's all wrapped up, they'll find themselves with a couple million in their pocket ready to start the next phase of their life. And that's what I would wish upon you. You know, in your case, hopefully tens of millions of dollars. And when you start the next phase of your life, you're like, all right, well, that was cool. What's next? You know that is interesting about the football players, and isn't it like sixty percent of basketball players uh, go broke? Right? 
right? I think, yeah, NFL and NBA, they like a huge percentage of them go bankrupt within like seven years or some shit. When you put it like that, though, how would it did? It makes a lot more sense because I was wondered how, but it's like they're thinking they're gonna have these long careers. They spend their first year's paycheck on a car and a house, their second one on other stupid stuff, and then like it's all over and they barely have enough money to pay like the bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're making 800 grand a year in the NBA not realizing that that's a three year span of their life. If they yep. had lived on, you know, the first year 80 grand, the next year 160 and the last year 240 grand, then they would have finished on the other side of that with millions in the bank and ready to kick off whatever's next. You know, and well, I do think it is though, to bring it back to me, a different mm-hmm. scenario. Cause I mean, if anything, my YouTube channel is an asset that technically if, I mean, I would never sell it. Like, that's not even a thought. But technically, it is an asset, and it is valuable. You know what I mean? Like, it is, channels yeah. this size would go for, I mean, I don't even have to say it, but dumb amounts of money. And um, obviously, like, I mean, I my videos, autopilot. Like, the minimum views I can pull a day because my catalog is just so interesting, and they consistently get views, is like 4 million views a day. Like, if I went 20 days without uploading, every day I would pull 4 million views like clockwork. Wow. Just to throw this out, like... What if you, the YouTube algorithm changes in a way that doesn't favor your channel, right? What if they heavily emphasize now YouTube wants to be like freaking better call Saul clip shows and crap like that, you know? Yeah, I'm not worried about that. I mean, like it's, it's pretty easy though. You just look at who's doing, who benefiting from the change and who's hurting. And then you just draw conclusions. And uh, I talk with uh, dozens of YouTubers weekly on mastermind calls and things like that. I mean, it would take like two I, two weeks to identify the change, and then I just implement it and start doing well. Any algorithm change can be easily found, and then you just adjust. And like that's the biggest thing is I'm just not hard headed. Like I'm willing to adjust and do whatever. You know what that's I mean? Like super, it, it, it's whatever. Back you know? in the day, there were mastermind calls like that, but we weren't very masterful at understanding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I I have three separate weekly mastermind calls. Two of them I set up myself. And yeah, we just, I mean, we literally assign each other homework. We're like, you, you go study this, you go study that. But we're at the point where there's nothing else to study. Like it's pretty straightforward now. The algorithm has been the same for years. Uh, yeah. It's you, just, I, I, I'm you, or maybe the new gen of guys, I think has it worked out in a way that the old schoolers did not. Yeah. That's hiring people. It's investing everything and just, you know, putting a lot of emphasis on the ideas and just, you know, I mean, basically that just in going above and beyond and making sure you always differentiate yourself. Like you just can't find content like this anywhere else. And if other people start doing it, I'm just going to go bigger. Cause like I said before, I'm just literally crazy. I don't care. I, and I think that's why I'm so big and I'm going to keep going big. Cause I'm just not afraid to spend lots of money and I'm not afraid to invest lots of time. And I'm just not afraid of any of it, you know? And I'm not afraid of falling off. I'm confident in my ability to just differentiate, my, differentiate myself. And I just don't see why people would stop watching as long as I'm, you know, spending 10 times more and investing 10 times more effort into every video. That's interesting. Yeah, I was the opposite. I, I was always not afraid of falling off, but predicting and knowing that I would fall off, right? And, and I would compare it to TV shows, right? Like, like. I don't know what's a modern show that fell off with a veep or was Game of Thrones there. Or but, you, a better one would just be Disney Channel. Like, you know, Disney Channel used to pump out stars left and right. But mm-hmm. now, like, no one knows who the hell is even on there. Anymore. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and Where I don't the know hell that, is Taj Maori now? Not <laughs> such a smart guy. It, with yeah. Disney, I don't know. Did their shows get worse, which is possible? Or did people just get tired of that show? Right, which is always how I saw myself. Like, I don't think Mail Monday got worse. I think I just answered all the friend zone questions that there were to answer. <laughs> you know, like it, enough is enough. And um, so I always sort of prepared for the end. And, uh, mm-hmm. and then when that end came, the Minecraft thing came. And then when that end came, I was like, oh my like, God, I forgot about woodycraft.net. I used, oh my God, dude, <laughs> I used to play on your faction server. I don't remember if you had other stuff. But dude, what? I used to know life factions. Literally, I had the highest rank on your like I'd pay for it. And I mean, <laughs> like, dude, I would have like a hundred wall, like on all four directions and like What was your faction had, name? Oh, do, do you know how long I have videos on my channel of me playing on Woodycraft dot? Was it good fellas? Was it uh No, we were never know. like a top one. You weren't a top uh, Yeah, it was always like because 
I would like tweet out the like who wants to help me mine resources and like pay people to help me like collect resources to build walls and things like that. Like oh, I was very I have a non gaming topic for Jericho. Yeah. So you are in addition to being a, a streamer in the music business. Mm -hmm. But the music you deal with is like electronic music mostly. Yeah, it's dance music. Yeah. Can you tell the songs apart? Because they, they all yeah, kind of go this? like a wick a wick a beep beep is kind of the that's like the most boomer thing that's like a, <laughs> like, I'm like can you tell it about songs for you uh -huh. would you be like oh sure i know that one yeah and pretty much any song i've listened to in a while like no yeah, way I mean, no way there's no way course. Yeah, you're gonna blow your you mind when i hear like a kick and snare from like a techno song and you're gonna be like there's no way it's not the same song but like yeah of course <laughs> first of all none of our songs sound even remotely similar they're all very unique right this is mm -hmm. not this. This is not like looking at hamburgers and saying, "Can you close your eyes and tell them apart?" This is like uh -huh. looking at, to me, like vastly different meals and being like, "Well, can you tell?" It's like, yes, I can tell you who the guy is that made it because I can mm -hmm. hear it. You know, so it's like, uh, it's it's like looking at different paintings and being like, you know, is if Van Gogh paints a clock, did he do the drippy clock? Like his clock's different from like I'm not sure a Warhol or or yeah. you know or Salvador uh, Dali. So you're thinking Dali, about. yeah, Dali. So it's like you know. I of course I can, but that's just uh sounds a little racist, you know? Like, can you tell them apart? They all look the same. They're all the same. I guess I can tell them apart. <laughs> that's a that's a great way to respond to someone having difficulty differentiating anything, being like, wow, a little, a little, a little racist. racist. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> right. Wow, you can't taste the black truffle oil on this burger.